Hello, I'm Giovanni Mancini, the Director of Product Management for E-Inc. We're here at IFA in Berlin, and I'd like to bring you up to date on some of the latest advancement with E-Inc and the technology and the project and products that we have. To start off with, I'd like to show you the new Kobo 6-inch e-reader. Kobo announced this a short while ago. It's a, a new 6-inch e-reader, a high-resolution e-reader with front light capability um, that, you know, basically front light can be uh, dimmed or increased. Uh, what's great about the Kobo e-reader, it has our new e-ink Regal waveform technology. What the Regal waveforms allow, uh, allow you to do is to eliminate the need for a, pull, a full page refresh when you're uh, uh, turning a page. So with the Regal waveforms, you really, rather than having to have a full page refresh with every page turn or every five page turns, you really don't need a full uh, page refresh for at least uh, 100 page turns. So this gives you more uh, focused reading capability. Nice. So mm -hmm. this th th wasn't there something similar before with the ink? Sometimes people didn't have to refresh everything, but it's right. different now. So the technology that we had before, you didn't have to refresh after every page, but you still would require a refresh about every five to 10 pages. With the Regal waveforms, you really don't need to have a full page refresh for probably at least 100 and more page turns. So you probably will not see a full page refresh in a, in a full reading, reading session if the uh, Regal waveforms have been enabled on your e-reader device. And the reason to refresh is to kind of to clean off the well, stuff? Is it not... Is it clean? Like every page turn is clean? Or does it get a little bit, what do you call, it, dirty or something? Well, it doesn't get dirty. It's just that what you might start seeing is you might start seeing some slight edge artifacts after uh, a couple of, uh, um, you know, 100 pages or so. Remember that, in, you know, with the e-ink technology, you actually have uh, pigments encapsulated in a small microcapsule. Here's a, an example of it. And we're physically moving these pigments up and down in the microcapsules. So as we know, when you're moving something, it has, you know, it, when it starts moving, it has energy associated with it. So it, it becomes you know, more difficult to control that compared to kind of standard display technology. And so what we have is we have you know, complicated waveforms that actually control how the pigment moves. And that's what gives kind of e-ink the sharpness that you see that you typically don't see in other types of uh, displays. Nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a new Kindle. Yes. It's just been um, announced. Yes, on Tuesday, Amazon announced their new Kindle Paperwhite. Um, the, what's new about the Kindle Paperwhite is that it has our new e-ink uh, Carta uh, display. Uh, e-ink Carta is an improvement over our previous e-ink Pearl displays. It has a 50% improvement in the contrast ratio, and it also has a 22% uh, improvement in the reflectance of the device. So the device will be wider, and it also be, will have a higher contrast. So it'll be a cause for a much easier reading capability. And, um, the, the new paper white also has the Regal waveforms. So what you'll also see is the elimination of the need for a full page refresh. So as you can see that, you know, with the, the new technology, uh, we're um, continuing to support the e-reader business, which is a still, you know, quite a large and significant uh, market out there. How's uh, the front light uh, up on and off? I forgot. How does it work? Um, basically, you call up the menu, um, and here you have uh, a slider switch that allows you to turn the so, front light so on and off. So did you say with Carta, mm -hmm. it's more white and more black? Uh, well, with, with Carta, we've done, uh, you know, basically done two things. We've improved the, improved the contrast ratio, which basically means the, ra the ratio of the white to the dark is, is higher. So the white is, the white is wider, and the dark is darker. So the, the display will, you know, will, will appear bright, slightly brighter to you, and the contrast, uh, and also the, the blacks will also be darker, so that the contrast is higher. So you'll see a 50% improvement in contrast ratio between an e-ink Carta display compared to an e-ink Pearl display. But uh, why wasn't it forever possible to do super white and super black? Why was it always, why was it a little bit gray and not super black before? Well, as I said before, what you're actually doing with our displays is you're moving little, you know, little pigment particles suspended in a fluid that, that have been encapsulated in a microcapsule um, that's about 45 microns in, in, in diameter. You know, when you're, when you're moving these pigments up and down, they don't all move at the same rate. 
So some will move faster, some will move slower. So there's quite a, a complicated technology that we refer to as our waveforms that's used to control that. And, that, you know, and that's part of the reason why you, got, you don't have you know, uh, the whites. But what's also allowing us to improve the technology is that as we do more research, we're able to develop pigments that have much brighter whites and, and, and that have much darker darks. And that's part of the research that we do. Our research scientists have many ideas that they're trying out in the lab to see how they can make the white whiter, how can they make the ink, the pigments move faster. So that's the research that we do on a daily basis within our labs. So that's the trick, make the whites whiter and the blacks blacker. The whites whiter, blacks, uh, the blacks blacker, blacker yeah. and then figure out how to control them in a way such that they don't mix with each other. So what is that? Is that the reference designs showing Carta? Or? So these, uh, you know, these are just our, our demo samples that we, uh, we use to show kind of our, our bare, bare bone display. So the here, you know, here's what you, you know, what, what you see with our ink Carta display when you don't have a touch on front of it and you don't have a front light. You know, this is kind of what we, we, we manufacture to, to see kind of the base technology and what it can produce. So did you say something about reflectance was better? Right. So the reflectance is a measure of the uh, of the whiteness of the product. So with Carta, we you know we've improved the reflectant the reflectance by twenty two by uh, over twenty two percent. And uh, Kindle uh, Amazon is talking about twenty five percent faster CPU. There's a faster processing now happening. Right. Um, that that would be the processor that they have within the device the, themselves. It's the, the electronics that they use within their their device. It has to be very tightly integrated with the way e-ink e works. It's well, like everything is in one chip and stuff. Well, well, the, the processor does a, a number of functions within the device, and so now we're getting kind of the detailed technologies of, uh, of the Kindle device itself. But yes, the, the, you know, the processors that are in there are very closely integrated with how our displays work, because they need to, to keep track uh, of you know, uh, which waveforms to use to, to update the display, you know, how are they doing the menus, and that's all controlled by the processor to, to access the waveforms that we provide them. So now everybody's talking about smartwatches, and it's going to be mm. awesome. This is this mm. is showing the time, right? But right. it's just an awesome demonstration. Right. So you know, one of the things about e-ink that we talk about is that our displays enabled you to basically design devices that you can't with any other type of display. This is a, a watch called the CST-1 that we, uh, was introduced at uh, CES this year. The company is called Central Standard Timing. They wanted to design a watch that um, uh, simply told time and was extremely thin. So this is the thinnest watch in the world. It's 0.8 millimeters uh, thick and really can only be done with, uh, with our display. Um, you know, with this watch, um, um, it's a very thin watch, extremely low power consumption. Charge the watch for uh, 10 minutes and you have about a month of battery life uh, on it. That's you cool. know, if you want to see what's inside uh, the, the technology itself, here's a, an example of it. You have our display and you have a very thin battery. That's, you know, that's how big the battery is for the watch. This is the battery. That's the battery right here. And here on the other side is what you have all the electronics that, that are uh, driving the, uh, the watch. So next could be mm -hmm. smartwatches, right? Right. So in smartwatches, um, a, a short while ago, we introduced a product uh, called E-Ink Mobius. What's great about E-Ink Mobius is that the screens are flexible. And e ink what do you call? Mo Mobius. Mobius. Right. Um, what, make, uh, what makes Mobius different is that the screens are flexible. And the reason that's important is by having a flexible screen, the screen is lighter, it's also rugged, which is important on a device that you're carrying on, on your hand. Um, this is a 1.73 inch Mobius display. Uh, this is the display that is used by a company called Sonostar in the smartwatch that they announced at Computex this year. That's awesome. That's awesome. The other thing about Mobius is that, you know, we have a plastic display that it can, it can be cut into different shapes. Here's an example of a Mobius display being uh, cut into a circular shape if you actually want to have a, a circular watch. That is something that you typically cannot do with uh, an, LC, an LCD type of uh, device. So here you talked about the size of the battery mm -hmm. and the size of the electronics. Could you have electronics do smart stuff and slightly bigger than this? Yes. I mean, basically, if you look at processors today and the embedded processors, you know, electronics can be extremely, extremely small. And so what's, what's really, you know, usually limiting the size of the device that you have or the weight of the device is the display that you have and the, and the weight of the battery. By, by using an e-ink screen, 
the, the, scre you know, the screen gives, gives you, uh, is very light, it's very low, um, uh, low in power consumption. And moving on from that, because you have low power consumption, you can then use a much smaller battery, which is also lighter. And that kind of makes the entire product that uh, the designer is putting together uh, much, uh, much lighter um, and uh, probably you know, more rugged. This is like eight grams or what? It's, um, it's, ex ex it's extremely, extremely uh, light. It's probably less than eight grams. It's like nothing. And then right. you add a little battery a little bit. Right. And you add some Bluetooth 4 because you want low power and you add some smart stuff here. Right. Maybe not, you don't even need to run Android maybe, but some kind of right. smart stuff, a little right. processor, I guess. Right. And, you know, that's basically what the designers are, are working on. So the challenge there is what is really the application that they want to deliver to the customer? You know, we provide the, the, the technology that, enab that enables the display. Could you have a one month battery smartwatch? Uh, very easily. You could so have that. that's kind of like awesome. Yes. But this, so the Sonostar, they have shown and they're showing more and they're launching? Uh, so Sonostar showed their, their watch at Computex this year in June. And they, you know, they're basically now uh, going into production and uh, uh, will announce their production schedule shortly. Nice. And more coming, I hope. Yes. All right. So, and then, uh, what is so, this? So, kind of uh, at the other end of the spectrum, uh, with Mobius as well, here's what we have is a 13.3 inch Mobius display. Um, this is a display that was, you know, specifically geared towards a business type of reading product. It's intended for, for a, a reading device in which you are carrying a lot of papers with you or possibly textbook. What you want here is a display that is light and is also that is rugged. Um, this is a full, uh, the size of a, f a full A4 sheet of paper. Um, it's used in a product from Sony called the Digital Paper Prototype that Sony is now uh, trialing in, uh, with three universities in Japan. It means they've already done a few hundred or, or thousands maybe. Um, we're not disclosing, Sony's not disclosing the, the, the number yet, but yes, they, they've been a number of units of those. What's so they just added... Some electronics slightly somewhere, and right. how so, does it look, the Sony device? So the Sony device basically does, looks uh, just, you know, uh, about the same size as this display, not much bigger than this. And it has a fully integrated um, uh, digitizer and capacitive touch capability so that you could uh, have a, a touch to turn the pages and, and basically control Flexible. it. But you also have a digitizer pen, so you can actually write on, on the pages and, and capture notes. But is now, it flexible? Well, the display is flexible. The device itself is not flexible. Because remember, you want actually want to be able to write on it. It's kind of hard to write on a flexible device. The reason why you want a flexible display is not because you want to flex the device, but because you want it to be rugged and you want it to be light. For example, one of the concerns with a display of this size is what happens if you drop it and it hits the, si hits the side of the table. As you can see, I, I can um, basically slam this display against the edge of the table and nothing happens to it. It's you know, still flexible, it won't break. And that's what you want kind of in that's a really large awesome. device. So, but, but Sony, do they ask, add some glass and stuff on top or? Um, well, you know, basically Sony has uh, uh, added a, a, um, a, a case to, to provide some rigidity to it so that you can actually carry, uh, carry it. And they have some uh, protective sheet in front of it to, to help with the, the digitizer. Do you need all this stuff? Well, this is the, you know, this is the actual electronics and the connections that uh, allow you to update uh, the, uh, uh, the, the micro capsules that are in this display. So, but in theory, you could have uh, different designs that are just flexible and no touch and stuff. And yes, you can. So it, it all depends what, you, what you're trying to deliver with it. So you know, what this allows you to do is make, make the device conformable so that if you, if you don't have a flat surface, you want to put a display on it, you can do it, you can do it with this. If you have a, a device that needs to flex um, in terms of its operations, you can do this with the, the Mobius device as well. And how is reading quality compared to, uh, let's say, the latest Kindle? So this is a, uh, our standard e-ink Pearl technology. Um, and um, so this would basically give you the same type of reading experience that you would have with any e-ink Pearl, uh, Pearl display on uh, uh, the previous genera uh, the generation of e-readers. How about Carta? Can you do Carta like this? We're not doing Carta with Mobius yet, but you know, there's no reason why we couldn't put Carta on these displays as well. Nice. Uh, are those two the same? They're just showing different things? Yeah, these are just showing different things. This is, uh, you know, one is showing how our e-ink technology works, and the, the second one is basically a, a page out of a control theory engineering uh, book. I wish I was in an university. I can use it. Or 
but maybe well, I can still sign up. I was in the married too, not too late. I don't well, know. well, hopefully it'll make engineer, yeah. en uh, engineering books a bit lighter in the future. It's really cool. And uh, so how much is going on with, uh, with this stuff? What is this? Okay. So one of the focus that, that e Inc has is actually to um, diversify into different uh, uh, business areas. And one of the things that we're focusing on that we're getting a lot of uh, uh, traction right now is in the area of electronic shelf labels. And the, the idea here is to provide an electronic shelf tag that replaces that little paper tag that uh, gives you the price on, your, on the store shelves. So what we have here is a, basically three technologies that, that we're using. One is our standard black and white pearl technology. Um, the second one is a technology we call e-ink Aurora, which is a black and white technology, but allows, allows operations all the way down to minus 25 degrees centigrade. So you can take this shelf tag and actually put it inside a freezer and continue to operate. Now, in addition to that, what we also introduced uh, a few months ago is a new product called E-Ink Spectra. You know, remember I talked to you about our microcapsules that have black and white pigments within it? Well, with Spectra, what we've done is we've actually encapsulated black, white, and red pigments within a microcup. And we're able to um, display you know, not only white and black and grays, but we're also able to display uh, reds as well. So this, you know, for a retail, for a retail application, this is important because it, it allows you to bring atten uh, the customer's attention to particular um, sales that you might have going on or particular information. Um, it basically is used to grab the, the, the customer's attention. Red is the best to grab the attention? Well, red is best to grab the attention. Red is also a color that is used by many retailers in terms of their branding. So the red is used to support all the branding experience that you have when you, when you go into a store. Now what's important about having electronic shelf labels is not that you're simply replacing a paper tag by um, an electronic tag. What this allows you to do is, as a retailer, is to guarantee that all the products that you have have the right price. You know, one of the most frustrating things that consumers complain about that they find very, you know, very frustrating with stores and, and uh, are upset about it is when they, they don't have confidence in the pricing or the pricing is, is wrong. So with, with electronic displays, all the pricing is actually updated from a central uh, pricing database. So whether, you know, as a retailer, whether you ha you're selling on, um, uh, from your website, from a retail store, from different websites or different uh, locations in different countries, you can have one central pricing database that maintains the price for all, all those applications so that you know that the price that's displayed is the correct price. Also, you know, once you have these electronic um, tags in the store, um, you know, you can also um, implement different uh, merchandising strategies. So, you know, because the, the prices can be updated in a, literally in a matter of seconds, you know, as a retailer, you can choose to have different, uh, different sales in different, uh, different times of the week or at different parts, uh, different times of the year or season because you can update the, the pricing uh, so quickly. How long does it last the battery? Well, you know, uh, I'm glad you asked that because one of the, the big thing about our displays is the, is the low energy that it uses. You know, in this case, you have a display with, you know, with three lithium cells, and this will probably last about two to five years on a, on a shelf. Two to five years, right. changing the prices once in a while. Basically changing the prices when you're in a typical you know, application that you, were, you would in a retail so store. So you would go, or you would change the price with RF something? Well, you, you could change the price in a number of different ways. This is actually designed to, to change the price with either a, a Wi-Fi connection, the same way that your computer connects to, to the internet, basically having a network within the, the store, or you could change the price using, using more of a local area uh, networking technology like, for example, Zigbee. But what's also um, novel about this is because our displays use so little power, there's actually some uh, displays that are being engineered right now where there's no batteries whatsoever. The, the display, the electronics are able to extract the energy from either the NFC signal or the RFID signal that in a device that's updating the price, and that's enough energy to actually update the display. Nice. And because our displays don't need any energy or power to, to uh, display, 
to continue maintaining the display, you actually don't need any any batteries in your uh, in the entire device. So somebody would go around the store and just update everything uh, right. with some kind of machine. Basically, you would have a handheld device that would either connect into your your network or would actually have the pricing information directly. And as it would scan in front of the price tag, it would read the ID and update the price using the uh, the energy that's in the either the NFC or the RFID signal. If there's a store who prefers blue or maybe green or something, right. you can do other or only red? Um, no. Well, you know, the way we've done this is that we actually have imparted a special property onto the red pigment that's in the, the micro cup. That is a property that we've added to the red pigment. It was not, it's not a property of the red pigment. We can add that property to blue pigment, to yellow pigment, to other colored pigments. And so that way, you know, in the future, as we want to support different types of uh, colors, different types of branding experiences, we can do that with, um, by adding those colors to different, different uh, colored pigments. Nice. So I'm hoping that before Christmas uh, you'll have uh, customers making smart watches. Well, we're hoping that as well. With the you know with the interest that we're getting right now, like with companies like Sonastar and different other companies, um, you know, hopefully we'll uh, we'll we'll see quite a bit of that.